All right, we'll go through the order flow today uh, and uh, note that uh, for the rest of the month, um, it's uh, you know June 19th, but uh, for the rest of June, uh, we will not have any uh, a book map uh, order flow uh, webinars. Uh, in fact, uh, our structure is going to be changing a little bit, and we have a real nice surprise for you guys uh, beginning in July uh, after the uh, U.S. holiday. So uh, that will be on uh, July 5th. Okay, so uh, it's going to be great. I think this will really help you guys uh, quite a bit uh, understanding order flow and integrating it into the way that you trade. Uh, we're real excited about this new direction. So, uh, so give us a, a little bit of time here, and we'll be right back to uh, to support uh, uh, live order flow uh, understanding uh, with Bookmap uh, in July. Okay. All right. Let's start off here with the risk disclaimer. Trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss. is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, we can go to Bookmap.com, uh, become a member there. Uh, and uh, you have access to a lot of free resources, and you can reach out to us at bookmap or support at bookmap.com. Okay, a lot of the free resources, or a few of them, are in the handouts folder in GoToWebinar that I've included uh, here. There's the uh, Bookmap HFT intro guide. Okay, that's uh, uh, your introduction to uh, high frequency trading and understanding because uh, you can see this in Bookmap. Right. So in the order flow, you, 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 can, you can spot uh, the algos and how they're operating, and this is going to give you an advantage. So understanding this environment and the way that these markets trade today is really important. Okay, we also have the user guide in that uh, handouts folder. And then uh, I include uh, CME Rule 575 because it, it talks about disruptive and prohibitive practices of, of uh, uh, HFT traders. All right, um, and um, uh, that uh, is all well documented in Bookmap. How uh, you can see the behavior, uh, this kind of disruptive uh, behavior. All right, so uh, uh, we can we can go over that if you guys have any questions. But uh, flip of the book is one of them. Spoofing is another. Uh, uh, ignition algos are another. I mean, there are many phenomena. And uh, when there is a good example, uh, I'll, I'll cover that. Uh, in in book map okay uh, so let's see if you're new to book map let me show you where you can find it it's under bookmap.com under the pricing tab here uh, and you can see all the different um, versions that we have I've, I've covered this pricing uh, quite a bit uh, I think I've answered all your guys questions but uh, for those of you who are new here uh, let's just make a distinction right down the middle here uh, there is just book map uh, and um, then there's bookmap with the DX feed. Okay, the DX feed is just a data feed. Okay, and um, the um, uh, it allows you to uh, access U.S. equities. Okay, and we've packaged it together. So uh, there's just there's two versions of bookmap. There's basic and advanced. And the the difference between the two uh, are the add-ons and the ability to trade from the chart. Okay, uh, and then. Um, the book map with the DX feed, this is for those equity guys uh, who are only interested in equities, uh, then uh, you might want to consider going with the package deal here. Okay. Now, if you have book map advanced or basic and you're looking at futures and you want to add DX feed, you can. It's no big deal. Just go into your book map portal here and then you can do one of the add-ons or upgrades here. Right, you will need 6.1, so you will need to upgrade to 6.1, and then you'll need to add the DX feed uh, to access Bookmap. Now, that, that's we're not a data provider; we're just offering, uh, with partnership uh, through DX feed, that there is the capability to uh, connect um, the the DX feed to Bookmap. Right, and and you can do that through us. Okay, we're not a broker. Uh, we're not a data provider, but uh, you can get access to it. Okay, it's $59 a month. Uh, so uh, let's also make a distinction here. Uh, you get a 14-day trial period with all of these products, okay, including the DX feed. Uh, you'll get a 14-day trial period if you get that as a standalone add-on. Uh, however, the uh, it will be delayed data. Okay, so if you don't want delayed data with DX feed, then I would uh, recommend just uh, outright purchasing it, uh, and then you'll have it. 
okay? Uh, there's a, a note on that as well. It's for the beginning of every calendar month. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, you know, June 19th. So you're only going to get it until the end of June. Uh, and then uh, it will renew, the DX feed will renew uh, on July 1st. All right. Okay. All right. So the, all these webinars are recorded. Uh, you can find them here. Uh, and um, uh, you click on the, uh, uh, under this education tab, you click here. Uh, that'll take you to the YouTube page. And then uh, you can access them all here. All right. Okay, and then you can follow us here on Twitter as well, uh, and uh, you'll get the most up-to-date uh, information of what's going on with Bookmap. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the uh, macro view. This is our process uh, that we go through every day here, uh, and uh, we're going to just get a, a feel for what's going on in the marketplace, uh, some of the uh, areas uh, of support and resistance, and just get an understanding. Right now, then we're going to look at the microstructure within Bookmap and how that relates to that macro view, uh, and then we're going to drill down and we have the process for looking at the order flow, and context is very important in order flow, uh, understanding the areas around it, etc. But we're going to be able to look very objectively at the order flow uh, because uh, we have all of the data that's uh, shown in front of us. Uh, and um, uh, these uh, uh, phenomena repeat again and again. So uh, we can uh, uh, really uh, uh, utilize this process to help us read uh, and, and pinpoint uh, entries, exits, and trade management. Okay, and I'll get into the order flow and the auction here in just a minute here. All right, so let's step back and uh, let's take a look at the ES since we're at all-time highs. Uh, and uh, real, real nice breakout, very strong. Uh, to the upside here, as you can see, and uh, take a look at some areas of interest. Okay, so this is the half-hour chart. Actually, let me even step back and we'll look at the daily here. Okay, and you can see the, the move here to the upside. All right, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so now this was a previous high swing here at, uh, at 24, 45, or, or 46. Okay. Now we've gone through that area, so that's uh, important to note, uh, and that is this line here, okay, 25, 45, 50. Okay. So are we going to accept or reject outside into this new territory? Uh, that's, uh, that's what we're, we're trying to uh, gauge and understand right now. We can see the 930 open here and, and the very aggressive buying uh, to the upside. Okay. Now it is on a little bit lighter volume than, uh, than previous days. So that's another thing to note, all right? So just getting a feel for, uh, you know, what's going on in this macro view. Uh, and uh, let's look at a five-minute chart and maybe look at some other areas uh, in uh, more microstructural areas. Uh, yeah, I am interested in, you can see we had a pause here and then we had to follow through to the upside. So this, this area here, the consolidation is of interest for me. Uh, and um, yeah, we can outline you know, the, the swings here. Uh, and then also this is, you know, now as well, uh, an area of consolidation here. Okay. Okay. So let, let's take a look at the, uh, uh, microstructure, uh, in book map. And, uh, what does that, uh, tell us here? Okay. Here's our 930 open. Okay. We see the initial drive to the upside. Uh, and then, uh, we can see, uh, very strong drive because look at the uh, consolidation here is up at a higher level. Uh, we did not come back to retest where we broke from here uh, and we see continuation to the upside up into the figure here, uh, 2550. Okay, that's important to note. Uh, there's going to be a lot of sellers up here just naturally just because uh, because of the round, the round numbers. Okay, and our area of breakout of, uh, of 24.45, well, we can see that uh, buyers are stepping in here uh, to provide liquidity uh, at that area. Okay, they were over here as well on the, uh, on the sell side, uh, and they've now flipped uh, to the other side here. Now, we'll see as we get into the auction process, uh, do they mean business or not? Okay, that's going to be an important distinction. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What else do I see? Um, not much. Uh, you know, it's a, um, I mean, you can see all the green dots, uh, you know, so very aggressive buying, uh, and, and then continuation here 
Let's take a look at this breakout uh, up to the, the, the figure here. Uh, we can see that uh, it's not as big as it was previously, okay? But it was, uh, you know, we can see this consolidation uh, is pretty, pretty strong, right? Uh, it's up at a higher high. We do not even come back to test uh, 45 yet, okay? But uh, we're looking pretty poised to now, right? So, um, yeah, we're in a range, uh, basically, and uh, the range at the moment, um, eh, you know, I mean, you can see it's downtrending, uh, just right in this area here, uh, but uh, it, we're basically just going sideways here, right? Okay, so now let's go to the auction uh, process and take a look here. Okay, we're going to answer three questions. Uh, we show up to this market, we show up to this auction, and we want to know what's going on in that auction. Where are the majority of the participants? Okay, and that'll be uh, understood by the current configuration of the book. And uh, and then we're going to take a look at how are these participants behaving as price approaches them. So do they still are, do they still have interest to buy or sell uh, at these areas, uh, or are they uh, are starting to um, uh, get cold feet and uh, pull their their liquidity uh, at these areas? Uh, that only that'll be an important distinction. Uh, now we also want to understand the context of those areas, not just the the participants at one price level. What about the areas around it? Are they adding uh, as price is coming down? Are they adding above uh, some of those higher liquidity areas, or are they adding below? Uh, that gives us a lot of context to that area. Okay, and we'll we'll, we'll get into it here. Uh, and then the thirdly, the um, large transactions. Where are they occurring? Okay, that's traditional tape reading, and we'll look at the, uh, the traded volume to see like where the uh, participants are uh, actually uh, uh, taking a, a position. Okay, all right. So uh, current configuration of the book. Well, we can see them very clearly here at 45. Okay, there's a uh, 1,650 contracts here at uh, 2445. Okay, so that's where they are on the bid. Uh, where are they on the offer? Well, we can see them still here uh, for the most part up at 2450. Okay, uh, one thing, uh, there's a lot of traders in here today. I uh, just want to uh, mention, uh, uh, I'm using uh, the rhythmic data feed and uh, so you might not see, well, you don't see uh, any sort of limit uh, to the limit order book. Okay, the order book is, is it's full depth right now. Okay, this is uh, something that is uh, uh, just coming out, uh, so you might uh, you might see white lines uh, that uh, show an extent uh, of your limit order book, and uh, that would be the lit book. And every other level beyond those areas are are not lit. Okay, they are not live. Okay, but uh, now uh, uh, this kind of market transparency that uh, uh, Rhythmic is offering, you can see that. Um, uh, all of these areas are live. So if someone uh, provides, jumps into the book and provides really high liquidity up here at uh, 52, for example, uh, and offers 1,600 contracts, well, we're gonna see that in real time, okay? All right, now, uh, let's see, I think Rhythmic and CQG uh, as well for the COMEX and the NYMEX uh, provide full book. Uh, but uh, other, other uh, data providers, uh, I do not know of any others at, at the moment, right? So uh, anyway, I just wanted to make that note because we can see that these areas up here, uh, we, we know that they are live even though, even though they're pretty far away from uh, current price. Okay, what else? Uh, we see uh, traders are starting to show some interest here at 48. As you can see that uh, they're starting to, uh, they were here earlier at 48 and then they pulled that liquidity as it got darker. And they started to add in a little bit, uh, and then it, and then it started to turn uh, you know darker gray here. So they're pulling liquidity, okay? and now they're adding back in. It turns a little bit lighter gray. Okay, and you can see we're channeling between those two areas right now in the book. All right, so that is the current configuration of that book. Okay, now the second question here: uh, How are they uh, participating uh, as price approaches them? All right, and we can answer that question too. Okay, so uh, 
Well, we, uh, we can't answer it at the moment because price has, is right in the middle. However, there's some of these previous areas, let's take a look at that. Okay, so uh, let me click on the hand tool. I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, we'll take a look. Okay, so when the current configuration was uh, a little, little, little different here, uh, they were up at 45.50, uh, we can start to read this auction. Okay, uh, you can see that uh, they were adding and pulling in this area. There was some buying interest. Okay, uh, but um, uh, this this buying interest here uh, wasn't so bullish. Uh, you know, we can see that the, they they pulled here, and we can zoom into this exact area and understand exactly what's going on in this auction. Okay, price starts to come down, they start to pull. Okay, that's showing rather bearish behavior. They don't want to be a buyer any longer. Okay, in fact, now they're adding here uh, a tick lower. Okay, so that's uh, at 25, 45 and a quarter. All right, a little bit of spoofing activity as well. Uh, or, you know, a skew in the book with higher liquidity here, very short-term high liquidity. Okay, you combine that with some of the aggressive selling, and you can see what what happens. Okay, so we're reading this whole area here and putting it into context. All right, so first off, uh, higher liquidity here. Uh, well, first off was the uh, liquidity here at 50 was uh, uh, 45 50 was pulled they skewed the book with uh, higher liquidity here on the offer and we see that they continued to hit the bid with the aggressive selling okay now uh, a lot of times uh, you'll, you'll see that uh, this can be the initial cascade for a nice move to the downside uh, and then you might see a flip of the book here uh, at that area okay they were here on the bid they would flip to the offer looking for uh, a pullback to that area. Uh, instead, uh, we only come down a few ticks and these guys jump back into the book. All right, and you can see that same behavior here again occurs. Okay, uh, and they're, they're showing it's high liquidity, but uh, uh, it and is new into the auction. Uh, and you can see that, um, uh, you know, price, uh, you know, veers, veers away from it. Uh, it, uh, it needs to kind of uh, recalculate uh, a value uh, and, uh, and in this area here. Okay? And again, same, same type of behavior that we see here. Okay? Okay. And now we're starting to, as we go forward here, start to read it a little bit better. Okay? Now, now they're becoming more interested, uh, higher liquidity. Okay? So you can see here it was... Uh, we went from 1,300 contracts here over to now 1,400, almost 1,500, okay, and they, and they started to pull. And then right here, uh, this is new, uh, a new skew in that auction from 1,400 contracts to 1,700 contracts, okay, very briefly. And then they pull and go one, one tick lower. So now understanding this area is like, well, you know, they're not, they're not really that interested in, in buying. I mean, they're more interested than they were before because they are providing higher liquidity here. But uh, reading the context of this auction uh, doesn't give us that insight that, that they really want to buy. The behavior we would want to see if they really want to buy would be that uh, not only would they uh, provide high liquidity at, for example, uh, this uh, uh, 45 and a quarter area, uh, they would... Um, uh, the areas around it and above it especially uh, would start to get aggressive. You would start to notice those areas uh, as uh, providing high liquidity. Uh, and then that would show very bullish behavior. All right? Instead, we don't see that. Okay. So let's go back and uh, what has uh, unfolded so far. Uh, not much. Not much. Okay. We're still just caught right in the middle here. All right. Okay, here we go. Maybe we'll get a, a, this push down into uh, into 45 right now. Let's take a look. Okay, and then uh, as we're watching this here, we're going to get to that third question, all right? And uh, that is transactions. Where are they occurring? Okay, we want to gauge the uh, intent of the trader, not the intent of the traders, uh, actually where they're positioning themselves. We've already gauged the intent with the first two questions here. Okay. Okay. So here, here, here's a. As we zoom out, we can see that behavior again. Okay, providing higher liquidity, but at lower areas here. All right, and this does coincide with our a level we saw in that uh, higher time frame. Right, 
are we going to, it gets back to that, that question we originally asked about this, this level here at 45 and, and, uh, and a half. Are we going to accept or reject into this new um, uh, breakout area of all-time highs here? Okay, if we don't, well, we might fall right back down into and find uh, maybe buyers down here uh, at uh, at forty around forty two, or maybe down here at forty. Okay. Any questions on that? Understanding this process, understanding what we're looking at. Uh, and then how to how to integrate that within uh, not only the uh, microstructure here that we see, but also our higher time frame. Okay. Okay, just a moment here. There's. Uh, Something I, I want to, um, since uh, we've got a lot of you guys in here today, I want to run a poll. Uh, okay. And uh, we launched this the other day, this poll here. Uh, if, can you guys see it? Uh, we're just looking for um, some of your interest here. Um, since now we offer uh, the equities, uh, you get get your feedback on this, right? The um, uh, are you interested in the uh, 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 futures uh, or or just the um, uh, equities or or both, or are you looking for other markets that uh, you'd like to see bookmap cover? Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, it looks like futures is winning the battle so far. So you equity guys, if you're interested in, in voting, uh, you might want to get in there and support that direction. Okay. We'll give it uh, a few more, a few more seconds here. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, one more. Uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, to go over with you, uh, since uh, that's the first question uh, for you, equity guys. Uh, I'd like to, and and futures, uh, not just uh, equities here. Um, uh, this is an important one. All right. So. Uh, uh, which brokers would you like to see in Bookmap? Okay, we've kind of boiled it down to uh, a, a few different brokers here, uh, and uh, and all three of these as well. They 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 offer um, uh, futures. So uh, you futures guys, uh, this is going to be important uh, important one as well. Uh, which direction you'd like us to uh, to support? Yeah, I mean, this would be really good because, uh, uh, you know, then um, uh, you guys could um, either either would, either one that you, you want there, uh, any of these brokers, uh, you're going to be able to get your equities, U.S. equities data as well. Okay. All right, a few questions here. Okay. Let's see. A uh, question about um, uh, being able to connect to uh, other exchanges. Well, uh, let me let me cover that here. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys finish up with that poll, uh, and then uh, I, I can cover this. The um, take a look at Bookmap.com, and under connectivity, you'll see uh, the um, 
uh, data providers that we support. Okay, if those data providers offer access to other markets, uh, you know, in the Asian, uh, some of the Asian markets, or maybe Indian markets uh, that you're interested in trading, or maybe South American markets, uh, then uh, uh, you know, then if, if you can get that data through through them, uh, then you can access it in Bookmap. All right. Uh, Axel, you want me to talk about uh, thinner markets? Sure. Okay. No, no, not not API data. Um, uh, you know, I mean, we we are a platform. Okay. Uh, just like any other platform, so you can connect Bookmap directly. All right. So the uh, I mean, there are a few different platforms that we use the API to connect, for example, um, uh, Ninja, so uh, NTT, right? So what you can do, uh, as well as uh, Interactive Brokers, the Trader Workstation, um, but um, uh, with uh, Ninja, for example, if you're accessing um, uh, those other markets uh, through Ninja, well, then connect Bookmap to, to, uh, to Ninja, and then you should be able to see those uh, those other markets within Bookmap. Okay. Uh, John, how how can you adjust adjust the size of the uh, of the dots? Yeah, that's that's a real easy one. Click up here on the studies configuration. Uh, click on uh, volume dots. Okay, and the dot size is here. Okay. I just leave it on the on the on the. Um, default setting uh, so that uh, most of you guys are going to be looking at that default as well okay all right let's uh, let's oh I'm sorry I, I'm not sharing my screen all right hold on just a minute here I'll close this okay thank you thanks for uh, participating in that uh, and let me share my screen okay there you go Okay, so John, here you go, studies configuration, volume dots, and then the volume dot size is right here. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's come back and uh, take a look what unfolded as we're going through those, um, uh, those polls. All right, so, you know, here, here's the behavior, okay? And we, we witnessed it earlier, right? We started to gauge it, okay? I mean, they, they did come in. Uh, with higher liquidity at this area at 45, right? We also started to gauge their intent, though, at this area, and we can we can just read it, and we're putting it together. Okay? And then here here here's answering that second question uh, emphatically. Okay, that they're pulling. Okay, price is starting to come down toward them. It goes one tick lower here. That's all it took, and they pull, they start pulling the majority of that liquidity. All right, and now they're down here at 43. Okay, now we go through that process again. Current configuration of the book uh, at 43, uh, and then uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I have to bring down the settings here a little bit uh, to to look for where they are on the offer, uh, and um, yeah, I mean they're still way up here, right? The majority of it, and we see 48 is still. Uh, in the game, I guess, but uh, that might be the next stop, right? And uh, and then we'll go through that process again. What what about the transactions? Okay, uh, where are they taking place? And um, it's kind of you know it's kind of both sides. I mean, we see a lot of buying here uh, in this area. There was the potential here, right in this area here, for the re this test of uh, coming up to to 48, right? Just by the transactions, uh, we can gauge it, right? reading that tape. Uh, and then you can see though, uh, well, we can we can start to read that tape a little bit better here uh, as I zoom in. Uh, look at the transactions that took place at the little highs here, okay? These these swings to the high here. Uh, and um, we can see that um, uh, there, was, there was very few, okay? There's also very few on the lows in this microstructural area here, okay? So that's why we're going sideways. Uh, there's really no interest on either side here, and that's where we want to gauge the um, the skew uh, in this random walk of price uh, in reading the tape. Okay, we can see that 
um, here, here, here the, the story started to change just a little bit. Okay. And maybe, maybe here gave us some, some clues, but uh, you know, th this might be a little bit better here. Now we're having, there's some green dots uh, starting to trade up here. Okay. Aggressive buyers are starting to get interested and they take it just a tick higher up into 47 and then that's it. You know, they're, they're not interested in, in uh, testing or uh, uh, reaching that higher liquidity here at 48. Okay, the, it basically, uh, the, the buyers exhaust out. Now, for, for exhausting, we want, to see, we want to see more areas like this, like there's no trading up here. Uh, some of the, some trading up here, I mean, this it starts to look like uh, maybe, you know, there's a potential here to, uh, to, to go higher. Uh, but uh, instead, uh, we go sideways a little bit more, and then the uh, very aggressive uh, sellers, they jump in and, and hit, the, uh, hit the bid pretty hard. Okay. And uh, we come short of making the low, uh, but then volume starts to trade down here. Okay, we start to note now in this area here, okay, a little more selling than buying. Okay, and that is the shift in the order flow that we can see in this area here. All right, and uh, and especially uh, I would say down here. Okay, note the um, uh, more selling uh, down at this lower he area here. And now this is microstructural, right? Uh, and uh, uh, you know we're kind of going back and forth here, uh, but uh, it's after something like this uh, we're looking for, uh, you know, maybe a return back into uh, where it exhausted previously. Okay, and that would be here, uh, around this 46, uh, and to see if buyers are are still interested or not. Okay, unless we can read that right now. Okay. Uh, right now, it's uh, no. I mean, uh, there's there's really no no skew that I, I can see. I mean, I still see there's more selling here in this area compared to buying. These guys at 45, they jump back in as well. Yeah, really, it's. Um, yeah, not not too not too interesting uh, here. Not not too much to cover at the moment. I mean, we do see now. You know, we we came up here and there was a little bit of buying. Now the the buyers are starting to accumulate a little bit, but but so are the sellers. A little bit little bit more buying than selling. All right. Anyway, I think that uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, you know, we um, keep an eye on this. Want to keep an eye on this uh, 45 area uh, due to our higher time frame. Uh, also, the uh, microstructure here, uh, and uh, uh, and then the, where we broke out from uh, that we can see here in the at the 9:30 open. Let's see where exactly is that. Okay, yeah, here's the 9:30 open here. Okay, so. Now it's that consolidation area that we're looking at at our higher time frame here, okay? And uh, and you can see that the buyers are lining up here at 43, right? So uh, they're looking to uh, buy and support any pullback into 43, okay? But uh, you know we need to wait again until price comes down into that area. Okay. All right, guys. Well, let's let's wrap it up. Uh, and, um, and, and note, uh, again, that, uh, this will be the last webinar, uh, for the month. Uh, and we'll, we'll come back with a, a new structure that, uh, we really think is going to, going to enhance your, uh, uh, integration of, uh, order flow, uh, into your trading. All right. And that'll be, uh, first webinar will be July 5th, uh, after the, uh, Independence Day holiday, uh, here in the U.S. All right, William. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, let's see. Any last minute questions? Uh, if not, then uh, we'll wrap it up and then that's that. Uh, okay, Axel, uh, thinner markets. I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, uh, yeah, bookmap uh, uh, shows uh, very nicely uh, the thinner markets. It's the same story. I, it's just that, uh, uh, you know, with they're more volatile because they're thinner, so you get more price action and movement. Uh, but uh, the same process we've used um, in gold, in oil, 
you know, understanding the uh, the auction uh, and uh, understanding the the intent of those traders in that auction. Okay, a lot of times what you'll get though is uh, see here at 45 how we came down here and kind of stopped and then you know rotated back up. Well, you you'll get more of a push through uh, and then more of a a, a pull back uh, to where it broke uh, in those thinner markets. Okay. Yeah, is it possible to reset the the um, uh, columns? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, we have some new features here uh, in uh, in Bookmap 6.0 where you can um, uh, just right click in the column here. Okay, so I'll, this is the CVP. I'm looking at this chart range here of volume that has traded, and uh, I'm going to right click in this chart, uh, and then I'm going to go to reset here. Uh, you can reset it now. Uh, you can reset it on a double click. Right? Or we have uh, other options here for uh, configuring the reset. Okay? You can uh, schedule a reset uh, at a specific time, like at 9.30, the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, cash open. Or uh, you can have it uh, uh, set uh, or reset every single uh, uh, you know, period. Uh, you know, it could be hours, minutes, seconds, etc. Okay. There's also a new reset here, conditional reset, uh, and uh, what this allows you to do is, uh, you know, you're, you're studying an area here, like like this is a, this is a great example. You're you're under, you're studying this really nice uh, single distribution that you can see here uh, as we're going sideways, um, uh, and uh, you know, if you see something trade outside of that area, uh, and uh, you don't want to reset though. Um, but uh, it, it trades out very quickly and then trades back in. Well, then uh, you know you, you can have it as a you can have the conditional reset uh, trade. Or, or I'm sorry, you can have the conditional reset um, occur uh, where it you'll need to have more than one trade in a, in a matter of time uh, based on the inputs there. You know, two and a half, one second on up to five seconds. Uh, if it trades and it starts to accept below. Uh, an area is the idea here. Uh, then reset, right? Uh, and then we're looking for a new structure here, a new structure to to occur down in this area. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. And we will catch up with you uh, in July. Then, okay. So uh, in, enjoy your uh, uh, your summer here, and uh, we'll come back and um, uh, hit it hard with uh, a, a real new. Uh, uh, structure that uh, I think you, you guys are going to really embrace. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye.